For the art of spray paint, you're going to require different color spray paints, different size straight edges, everyday household items like cups or lids, and more importantly, your mask. My name is Arturo Lopez and I created Spricasso Studios back in 1999. I've then been teaching people how to create master level paintings using nothing more than just spray paints and everyday household items. The beauty of this art is that you don't have to have a steady hand or know how to draw. All it requires is a little bit of imagination and some dedication. So join us and you too can become a Spricasso master. I will walk you through diverse techniques of creating beginner level paintings, intermediate level paintings, advanced level paintings, and will take your skill even further into master level paintings. So if you guys are ready to embark into a new art adventure, grab your spray paints and materials, let's get started. Materials required for the art of spray painting can be found anywhere. I would begin in your garage and see what you have. You're gonna need various colors, make sure that they're all gloss and part of the same brand. Usually mixing brands can cause some undesired effects. You're gonna need poster board, you're gonna need some magazine sheets, masking tape, popsicle sticks, foam brushes, different size straight edges, the spray castle tools. If you have any questions on how to create the spray castle tools, please visit my website at www.spraycastle.com. Most importantly, we recommend you use a mask that has filters on the side. Though spray painting can be a lot of fun, it can be very hazardous to your health. So if you're going to spray paint, make sure you do it outside or in a well-ventilated area. Spraycastle does not condone the misuse of spray paints or destructive arts such as graffiti. Please spray paint responsibly. The title of today's spray painting is called A Distant Land. This was done on canvas board 16 inches by 20 inches. And this is what the painting is going to look like. In today's spray painting, we're going to do a combination of a space painting and a landscape. I hope you guys are ready for this. Grab your materials. Let's do this. Crew, I can't stress out enough how important it is to always wear your mask when spray painting, even if you do it in a very well ventilated area. Uh, please protect your lungs. Your health and safety is very important to us. Okay, so as always, I always like to place the stencil down. So that I could get a visual of how much spray paint and where the planet is going to be located. So this is going to be a planet. So I like to get a little bit of black. Just going to go around the stencil. You don't have to do a whole lot. You know, you don't have to make it really dark. Just enough so that you know where the stencil is going to go. There you go. So this is going to be our planet. I'm going to use a combination of blues. I have some light blue. Um, I have some dark blue as well. So I'm gonna. my first layer is going to be the dark blue. This is going to be our primary color in the series of creating uh, texture terrain on this planet. Second, make sure you shake and spray your can before doing this. I'm going to add light blue as my secondary layer. This is a layer that we're going to try and remove to show some of the, the darker color underneath. So I'm going to cover this up. Now, I'm going to add a little bit more dark blue on top of this so that we get a nice combination of mixture between the two colors. Now I'm going to use some black. Now this black is going to be located around the same area where I'm going to put my shadow. The reason I'm adding it now is so that I can come over here and create a texture and it'll be a darker looking texture, giving our planet a more defined 3D look. As you might have noticed, I'm using plastic to create this. That's because plastic, you can crumble it and it'll give you a more rougher texture. Now before we put our stencil down, we got to create our shadow. So I'm going to use some black. This is gloss black. Now be sure you let some of that overspray go onto your planet, just like I'm doing here. All right, once you've done this, we are now ready to put our stencil on top. Remember that when choosing a stencil, you can't have any rounded edges. they got to be sharp. And I'm talking not sharp like they're going to cut you, but not dented or bended. So put your stencil very gently. You don't want to put any pressure on this. Now, I want this planet to have a bit of a glow, so I'm going to use some light blue. Just going to go over it and define that planet circle. Right? So you want to make sure you go all the way around your stencil. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of a transitional effect here by adding another layer. This is going to be a thin layer of dark blue, and I'm going to blend this into our light blue. 
so that it'll give us the effect like there's this light blue transitioning into a dark blue color. Okay, we're gonna go all the way around. I'm gonna use some black now to complete the transitional effect. So it'll go from dark to dark blue to light blue. Okay, make sure we go all the way around that. Now we're just preparing. This is gonna be the space in the background. So we still gotta add some stars to this. But do you see how doing the transitional effects adds more realism to your painting? So we're using three different colors here, light blue, dark blue, and then black. Now we're gonna use the star technique and this is where we sputter some white paint onto our painting. So very gently, turning the can 45 degree, I'm just gonna try and squeeze and let the can drizzle on top of our painting. It may take a few tries depending on how full the can is. Usually if it's brand new, you guys are gonna struggle a little bit with it. There's other methods. You can put a little bit of spray paint on the crap on the cap and then sputter that onto your painting, or you can put a little bit of spray paint on your fingers and sputter them. There's many ways. This is the way I prefer. Alright, let's take a look at what our planet looks like. Look at that. Right, you guys are ready to uh, add a layer of mountains on top of your planet. I know this is the part where a lot of people have issues with. Once they see how good their planet came out, they don't want to mess with it. In this case, I'm just going to use a little bit of black, use the soft tip spray castle tool. Guys, this is a tool that I get specially made for us. Uh, you can definitely go to our website, take a look at it there. Uh, there's similar tools out there on the market that you can you can definitely go to any arts and crafts store and see if they have something similar to it. So I'm just going to put a little bit of black onto the magazine sheet and then notice what I'm doing here. I'm creating the outline of the mountains. So I'm overlapping the planet that we just created. It's really up to you to define how these mountains are going to look. Now, guys, I live in Denver, Colorado, so we have the Rocky Mountains right here. So not that I'm trying to make my mountains look very uh, similar to the Rocky Mountains, but I wanted to have a lot of very sharp edges to it. See all the nice little points at the top? Well, that's what I was going for. Now we've got to create a light source. I want my light source. We, we've been preparing for the light source to be on the left side of our painting, right? That's why we added some of the darker colors on our planet on the right. So with that in mind, I'm going to add light blue to the left side of our mountains. Very easy to do, and it creates a very, very defined highlighted area on our, on our spray painting here. Remember, part of creating uh, this illusion of light source is to stay consistent. So no matter where you add your light sources, it has to be on the left side of the mountains. So I'm going to tap into a little bit more light blue. And I'm going to start creating some of the face right here. And just kind of highlight it. And see, the more light blue you add to it, the brighter it looks. And then I blend it in with the colors underneath. Tap, 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 and smear. See that? Tap, tap, and smear. It'll give you a more realistic looking mountain. And we'll just add a little bit more right here. Look at that. And see how it blends really nice together. Now at the very bottom of this, I'm going to add some light blue. And I'm just going to create a cloud on the bottom. Let me show you what that looks like. There we go. Awesome. All right, now I'm using my sea sponge. I tapped into some black. Now I'm going to create some trees here in the background. You guys remember how to create these little pine trees? Very simple to do. You start off at the very tip, and you start working your way down. I usually like to imagine a Christmas tree. So I start at the very tip, and then I start moving downward from left to right, left to right and as I'm going down you start creating this the the um, the shape of the tree very easy to do now they got to be small because they're off in the distance right let's create some more over here tap 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 left to right left to right very easy to do this is something that you can do when spray painting in life this uh, spray painting is not too complicated where it's going to take a lot of time nor will it bore your viewers. So this is definitely one that I encourage you guys that if you spray paint live outside on the streets, 
this is one that you give it a try. Now using the soft disk break hustle tool, we're going to tap into some black and create another layer. This is going to be a silhouette terrain layer. Now it's the same way that we created the mounts on the top. We create our outline, and then we kind of smear it into our media. Alright, so let's do that. I'm going to tap some more here. Tap, tap, tap. Very, very neat. Very easy to do too. And notice that the land terrain is not just black. Because you're uh, mixing it into your medium, it creates a blending effect. So there are some areas that are darker than others. Just going to add a little bit of black here. And in this case, I am spraying onto our our medium onto our canvas. I'm not just spraying it to create a defined line. Now I'm going to add some blue here because I wanted to create the illusion of a shadow. So notice how on the top it looks darker and then it goes to blue on the bottom. That's exactly what we were shooting for. Okay, let me add a little bit of light blue here just to define this a little bit better. Now we're going to create another layer and this is going to be a plant layer. So this is going to be grass strands, maybe some bushes closer to us. It's going to create a couple of strands here. Now you want your strands to overlap other layers. In this case, you want some of these grass strands to overlap the water layer that you just added. Now notice how easy it is to create some trees in the distance using the grass technique or the fur technique. We just smear upwards and it creates the illusion that there's trees in the background. Further, further in the back, it's this is a technique that is very useful because you can't really, it would take a very, very small uh, sea sponge to create these trees in the background. So what you do is you smear it upwards and it creates the illusion that there's a miniature forest back there. All right, let's work on our trees here. So as we get closer to the viewer, our trees are going to get bigger. So I'm going to add a bigger tree right about here. The same way that we created the smaller ones, just bigger. <laughs> All right. Tap into some more black. Let's finish this bottom part. Now I noticed that I, I, uh, I covered one of our trees that we created earlier. You know what? It happens. It happens. But you can add more trees. Come over here and add another one. Tap, tap, tap. Remember, does the further away they are, the smaller they are. Closer to the viewer, the bigger they are, the blacker they are. Okay, we're just going to create some more grass strands here. And I'm making sure that they overlap some of these other layers, like the water layer. Some of these other rocks that we had. Let's take a look at our finished product. This was definitely a lot of fun to do. I hope you guys definitely give it a try. Let's take a closer look. And there you have it, folks. Hope you guys have enjoyed today's tutorial. Until next time, crew, keep those cans shaking.